Well, that's where it started at. This cemetery. At our great-grandfather, G.W. Felker. On one side of him is his wife, Laura Shields. On the other side of him is his mother. Uh, his mother, which would be our great, great grandmother. That's on the other side of him. And right here is my grandmother who was born March 6, 1880, as a Lee Ward. Our grandfather was Reverend G.W. Felker. And that's where I, the name of our cemetery comes from. It's the Felkers and Wards Cemetery. These are our aunts and uncles and cousins buried down on this end and for some reason I always have a day after the funerals that I come back and visit our cemetery yes oh This was devastating. That's the word, devastating. Those are cousins. This was devastating. Because we was expecting my sister to come home. Mother Dylan said it so well. She called me and said, y'all ain't coming down and didn't come down off the wall of prayer. No, we did not. No, we did not. We bless the Lord. We thank the Lord. We thank God. Uh, we didn't give up. We thank God. Because he has the final say. It could be right. It could be wrong. They could die in tragic deaths. He can bring them back up. They could die by mistake. He can lift them back up. If the, He can keep them from dying. God is able to keep us from falling. And to present us. I knew I was coming to the grave site today. And the scripture has stayed on my mind. Regardless, I work, I've worked in the court for, this is my 23rd year, Cobb County. I've worked in the sheriff department for some months I've seen thousands of cases tragic cases death cases and in all that I've seen everything that I've seen I've seen some be brought back to life from death though I've seen some of the best of the best die. And as humans, we're want why? Oh God, was that the right decision? But did you know God ain't never made a wrong decision? Ever. Ever. I was thinking in Exodus when he repented of what he was going to do. Even God, the creator of the universe, is, per is perfect. 
is perfect. He knows the day, the hour, the timing. He has to know because at 2.58 on April the 12th, my brother's birthday, he had me up at 2.58 a.m. that morning. Within 36 minutes of when my sister would cold. Not only was I up, but many of you from what I'm hearing were up. She was not alone. God had us on duty. God had us in his submissive will. It was devastating. Devastating. I can remember that morning. I heard the phone ring. And the Lord said, let Sheila pick it up. The Lord said it. Her oldest. Now at that moment, I didn't know why God said, let Sheila pick it up. But God said, let Sheila pick it up. But I was right there at the steps, right there at the steps when my niece went down on her knees and, and just passed out, kind of, pulling the phone, asking the nurse, tell me what you said, tell me. Because Sheila couldn't, Sheila couldn't get there. That was her mother. That was her mother. Shay was right behind her. Yes. And the Lord, believe it or not, woke Willie up. Willie had us fasting the day before. God told him to tell everybody to fast. I thought to myself, fast on Easter Sunday? And he had us fasting from that midnight all the way over to 5 o'clock that day. God pulled all of his children, the grands, together in the kitchen. And they had dinner after the fast. See how perfect God is? It was like my brother-in-law, Deacon Culver, was prepared and was preparing himself for something he could not handle. Don't mean that he couldn't handle death. After 53 years, it would have touched my heart too. After 65 years and my sister was 10 years older than me. So it was devastating. It was devastating because we were depending and holding on to God's unchanging hand. But God does what he wants to do. I don't question God. I'm not grieved over what God did. Man may have made a mistake, but God had my sister in his hands. God had her. She didn't suffer. I do not believe it. I do not believe that she felt the pain because God had her. God had her. God had her. I was there the night, that's who I was telling you all about a few weeks ago on a video when I was saying I was with my mother. The night before she passed that morning, I had to sit with her. And one of my heart's desires and things were... Um, that night, 
my mom had prayed, my sister Linnell said, that God would put me to sleep. Okay, my bed was as close as my sister Edna right here and my mom. My bed was just that close to her. God put me to sleep. I did not hear her suffering. I did not hear her moaning. But the nurse told me when I woke up, your mom had a rough night. That's what the nurse told me. I have beat myself up from October the 21st, 1988. I did, y'all. God, why you didn't wake me up? Why did I sleep? Why, why didn't I hear anything? And my sister, Linnell, comforted me. She said, the last thing mother told me, that I prayed that Mary go to sleep, that Mary don't hear nothing, that, that Mary is go to sleep, and I did. But on that day, May had a comfort, we call her May, Miriam, had a confidence in me that I didn't even have in myself. She said, she told my mother, she said, uh, my mother had did something in the bed, and um, May and Virginia was taking over the shift where I was leaving, going to the IRS as a lead branch manager down uh, for the Federal Employees Credit Union. My mother said, go to work, Mary. May said, no, Mary can do it. Mary is going to clean you up. My mother had a lot of comfort. You had to know May. My mother had a lot of confidence in May. Okay, uh, as as that evangelist missionary, and she said, "No, you're gonna do, you do it, May." And May said, "No, Mary's gonna do it. She can do it." My sister had confidence in me, and I thank God for it. That morning, with my mother's eyes met my eyes. I smelt death. I was telling, y'all let me tell you how, how silly it was. I called Bishop Payton. I called Mother Payton. I called uh, 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 them Fine Sydney. I called uh, everybody. The, the, the customers at the IRS branch on Baker Street called my sister Linnell and told my sister Linnell, your sister can't stop crying. Y'all got to come get her. She's just crying. Former Governor Roy Barnes, State Representative or, and Senator Steve Thompson, State Representative Joe Mac Wilson, State uh, Judge Irma Glover, all of them. Harriet Smith was right there at my side at Life Chiropractor College. I was running from here. I said, if I go up there, I was running for office then. I said, if I go up there, my mom won't die. In my head, I'm saying all this stuff. My mom ain't going to die if I go up there. But just to show as I'm showing you her grave on October the 21st, 1988, I was at Life Chiropractic College. I was speaking or trying to speak because nothing came out but some tears on national TV. They had to sit me down. Yes, that's what I went through. The things that I went through. Yes, I cried when my sister died. Don't you kid yourself. I thought I was going to just shake my head off. I was crying, so I just couldn't believe it.
but I could believe it. But at three two fifty eight that morning, and that's about the time it was when my mother got sick over in the morning, over in the morning, over in the a m morning. I believe that May and Mother met up on April the 12th, on April the 13th a.m. morning. And I think that Mother took May's hand and said, come on with me. I believe that, (laughs) okay? You can believe what you want to believe. But I believe that the Lord said, well done. Thou good and faithful servant. I believe the Lord told me, well done. I wasn't asleep. I didn't sleep none that night. I prayed from, the, from October the 21st, 1988, that don't let me go to sleep on my job, God. Don't let me go to sleep on your work. And on April the 12th to April the 13th at 2.58 in the morning, down to 4.16 when she passed away, God had me up. I, I think, so, so I thank me for that confidence and my growing in the Lord. My growth in God. My growth in God. Yeah, it was growth in God. It was growth in God from my mother to Miriam. Yes. It was growth in those two peoples over the years. Yes. I made that bed up. I bathed my mother. I did. I changed her all by myself. I changed her clothes. I did. The ginger came in and May wouldn't let nobody help me. May said, Mary can do this. I was an aspiring missionary then. Aspiring means you're learning. You're learning. Yes. 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 When I sung the song at my sister's funeral, I was a little bit afraid because I didn't know how their program was set up. But I'm satisfied with Jesus. That's what's on my mother's grave, if you can see it there. I believe that May was satisfied. I don't believe that nothing caught her off God. I don't believe with the wisdom of God that my sister had that she was caught off God. No way. No way. I remember that morning um, when I was, I told Chris, Sheila, Steve, and Suzanne, we need to take May to the hospital. We did two treatments. She wanted me to set up two treatments for her because she had asthma. I did one about three and I one about 11 something. And I told her, May, it's time. She looked at me. I'm not going nowhere. (laughs) She didn't want to go. But as, as she was sitting in the bathroom and Sheila was preparing her, she reminded me so much of my mom. She did. And that day in the hospital... Yes, when her eyes and my eyes met, and they did, before Crystal got up there. 
My sister was not asleep in the Lord. My sister was very wise after over 40 years in the hospital and and over 50 years walking and talking with Jesus. That's my dad right there, Samuel Lewis Ward. Now, we just knew that we were going to die when my dad died. Oh, yes, we just knew, all of us. I, I, got up, I got up and started running from Atlanta to Cobb County about my dad. When we got to the bottom of the hill over here in Mableton and I saw Bishop Payton's car, I don't remember what happened after then, but, but I knew if Bishop and Mother Payton was at the house... It was true. He was praying for everybody to step through the door because all of us was passing out. That's my sister, Edna Cleola. She came to take care of me when I had my oldest child. She died on February the 10th, 1974, and I was pregnant with Alan up to May the 18th, 1974. My sister came to my house every day to take care of me. I was dumb, too, as far as such. But God had angels. Now, that's my little great, my niece. Sabrina is down up under the hill. My great niece. And Belinda is my niece. Sabrina died first. Belinda died second. Swimming in a swimming pool. This is my brother Grady. Grady Lamar Ward. This was my A Spoon Coon. That's Wayne. No, that's Sam. Charles. Randy. Mm -hmm. This is James Brooks' wife, Diane. And this is my sister Miriam. My sister Miriam. Yes. God bless my soul through my sister. <laughs>